Hey Vikes, welcome back to the second episode of Sagas. I'm Regan Bond, your host. The theme for this show is family. Tonight's show, we look at a hashtag that brings our community together, a community resource room, a club that brings kids together, and a class that brings all kinds of students together. In our first story, I talked to Mr. Monahan about how our community comes together like a family to help one another out through a hard time. Our hashtag, Seaman Strong, is not something new to our community. It is commonly used for times of weakness so our community can lift its spirits and come together as a family. You've probably seen the hashtag Seaman Strong pop up on your social media from time to time. Our community uses this hashtag to bring all of us together through the good and the bad times. Recently, senior Jesse Hass's mom was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. He has stage four breast cancer, um, estrogen positive, which means it's not aggressive, but she's, they think she's had it for almost three years now. Jesse has plans to raise awareness and to fundraise to help people with cancer. I thought of like, I wanna do a shirt but I don't just like want to do a shirt just for my mom. Like I feel like there's more people out there that know of like grandmas or moms that have breast cancer and just it's not known to everybody. And so I thought a shirt that was just simple breast cancer awareness. Jessie has witnessed how our community comes together from her mom's Facebook page. I really think our community comes together more when like someone's in need of just like just support in general and there's like already been a lot of people out there that have like let me know what I can do and a bunch of stuff like that. I asked principal Mr. Monahan and senior Jesse Hass about their thoughts on the hashtag semen strong. I think that those are synonyms they go together right semen strong and semen family is what it means coming together and uniting one another around a cause or a purpose or sometimes a tragedy. When I think of Seaman Strong, I think of when, I don't know, just when someone's having a tough time in the community, we all come together and really just try to lend a hand, anything we can do. And I just think of, instead of like everyone getting down, it's like everyone just comes together. And I think it's just a wonderful community how we come together and support one another. Seaman Strong isn't just a hashtag on social media. It is a sign hanging in the school for every person that walks in to know that you are a part of much more than just a school. The history of the hashtag Seaman Strong is unknown, but the meaning behind will be left for many generations to come. Our next story touches base on a new cause in one of our elementary schools. You've probably heard about the organization Operation Backpack, which helps give food to families for the weekend, but not many people know of the Logan Community Resource Room, which collects and gives out clothing and food. With the creation of the new Mathis Early Learning Center, it has created a new space at Logan Elementary for a community resource room. We created it because families um, at Logan and across the district, district oftentimes have needs um, of items that are what others seem to be basic, like clothes and food. Um, we are trying to provide those supplemental items for them. Um, we have a food bank that has been um, stocked with donations. Um, we also have been trying to provide a clothing bank, um, which actually is previous years, we, there are families that are in need. And sometimes we would draw on community resources, but the frequency of the need would just seem like it was almost on a weekly or sometimes even on a daily basis. So it was a preference for all of us here at Logan to have this, these items on stock, on hand, so that if a family came in today, we could say, hey, sure, we do have groceries for you to take home tonight. Items are available all year long, but browsing for shopping is available during the fall and spring parent-teacher conferences. We actually currently have our winter and fall um, items out and then in the spring when we have conferences we'll pull out all of the spring and summer items. So it is a lot of clothing and it is hard to manage but we actually just put the clothing racks up twice a year. The Interact Club put on their annual sleep in a box event giving all the donated items to the resource room. The Interact Club donated 
an enormous amount of canned goods and it honestly helped us tremendously in starting the food bank. There were all kinds of items that students brought in, in order to have uh, further amenities in their boxes during Sleep in a Box. Uh, some of the items include canned goods, box foods, um, uh, items uh, like toiletry items, uh, things of that nature. Anything that's basically non-perishable is allowed. We have a lot of donations come in from staff here at Logan or even around the district. Um, however, the Interact Club's donation stopped the cabinets, which is what obviously our goal is so that we have plenty to hand out. I think it's fantastic that our students' uh, participation in Sleep in a Box uh, allows for not just the greater community but also the the USD 345 community to have the opportunity to uh, number one feed those that are less fortunate and number two by feeding them help improve their education. If you're interested in any of these items available or interested in helping the room there are multiple ways you can get involved. All you need to do basically is get a hold of myself Kelly Hegarty or Sharon Stevie the other social worker um, we can meet with families. If it's not during parent-teacher conference time, they can come in and um, we can try to fill what they need. Um, if you wanted to volunteer your time as far as like helping organize clothes, we're always looking for that. The donations that we're looking for at this point are uh, personal hygiene, um, soaps, shampoo and conditioner, washcloths, um, maybe some laundry detergent. The resource room has had an impact on the district and community and looks to continue doing this for years to come. We appreciate the district's support in letting us have this room and helping us get it going. Uh, we have already been able to help several families and it definitely is being utilized. So we appreciate everything the district has done to support us. If you would like to get involved with the resource room, please get a hold of Kelly Haggerty at Logan Elementary. Kids all around find themselves in different groups and activities, but some students at Seaman High have engrossed themselves in a very unique club. This allows them to meet weekly and enjoy hanging out while playing a game. I'm rogue and um, I steal what I can. I cheat people out of their money and I'm very greedy. I also owe a lot of money to the Merchant Guild and I'm scared of heights. That sounds fun. Students at Seaman High School have found themselves creating bonds in a new organization, Dungeons and Dragons Club. Sponsor Mr. Goble has shared his insights on the club. We started it last year, the exact date I'm not exactly sure. Mrs. Esser approached me and she heard that I played Dungeons and Dragons before and she wanted to do a uh, program that students who were not in traditional other um, school programs could be a part of. The dust and cobwebs have been disturbed by many footprints, two main concerns and natural types of creatures. The stone uh, one of the things we do with our club is we teach people how to play the game, we teach people how to run games, so this organization is student-led. The vast majority of campaigns are being led by students. Students gain a wide variety of things. Uh, first off, if they are the dungeon master of the group, uh, they get to learn how to manage a group, how to manage uh, different personalities, uh, resolve conflict within the group. Uh, it also gives players a chance to socialize with other students. A lot of the students who are in the clubs are, I would like to say, the nerdier bunch. Um, they're a little bit shy. Um, you know, they might get picked on because they like nerdy things. It gives a, an outlet and a way to connect with other students uh, who share kind of the same interests, which makes it a little bit different and unique compared to other clubs. Senior Connor Bryant was able to give us his thoughts on the club. So what you see a lot of is, especially because we all run generally the same campaign. It is a solid stone field. It's flat and smooth with a slight upward. And so what you see a lot of happening is you have like your own almost immediate families and that'll be your game master, your dungeon master, whatever you call them, and then all your players. So you form relationships just within your own group where people have kind of like a friendly rivalry between each other or like to protect and work with each other. And then you can, and then you just go around and talk to your like extended family, which would be like the rest of the D and D club, 
and you hear about all these neat things that they've been doing in their part of the story. The few people that I did know, it was like kind of a half no. I'm like, I know who they are, but I wasn't totally sure like how they acted and that kind of thing. And through playing, I've gotten to know them way better. And then the people that I just didn't know whatsoever, um, it's been a lot easier to learn like who they or who they are, what their personality is like, just through playing with them. I feel like there's a, almost a lot of prejudice against it. Like a lot of people look at it and go, "Oh no, that's for nerds or whatever. I don't want to try it." But if you just want to have fun with friends, it's basically like uh, kind of like those build your own adventure books. So if you want just a freedom, a good way to entertain yourself or make friends, you know, I. I suggest it. Dungeons and Dragons Club has done far more than harbor an environment of fantasy and fun. It has created a family that will last a lifetime. You've probably seen the new feathery additions to our school hanging out over by the tennis courts. FFA and the Vet Tech class have worked very hard and have added on something very different to Seaman High School's campus. Let's find out more about it. FFA received a $5,000 check as a grant from Neutrina, and the grant is called Feed It Forward, and it's an agricultural education-based grant. Uh, they also help rescues around the area, around the United States as well. FFA did not use the money just for their club, but to benefit and work with the Viking Warriors to add something completely new to the school's campus. The Viking Warrior Program at Seaman High School is a program for students that have severe and or multiple disabilities. So we focus on curriculum that is at their individual level and that helps them um, later on in life become a productive member of society while being as independent as possible. The chickens are fairly small and they're fairly easy to take care of and you know they're super sweet they're full of personality our girls are so sweet and so we just thought that chickens would be a great fit for us and the Viking Warriors. Mrs. Van Gordon approached me at the end of last year, I believe, and said, hey, I have this crazy idea about us raising chickens, and I thought um, that the Viking Warriors would want to be involved in that, and I immediately thought, that's a great idea. Um, I thought my students would really like to do that, and it would be super beneficial for um, my students and her students to team up. Overall, the project took about a week to completely finish with the help of the students and a couple of outsiders. I kind of designed it along with my 8th hour vet science class uh, and so my dad actually built it along with my brother uh, and then we had students from the 8th hour class finish it up once it came here. We basically just got a, a shell of a shed is what got delivered to us and then we had to make it a trick and coop. Um, so we uh, put in the perches, we put in the waters, uh, we put in all the feeders, the nesting boxes and then we also uh, put together you know the outdoor portions and all of that and then painted it to make it all look pretty as well. We have a stationary water uh, for the time being the water we built um, ended up failing. For the food we have two PVC pipe um, tubes that we made where you can put feed in from the outside and then it will sit there so whenever they want to eat they can just walk over to the PVC pipe and you know eat. Both vet tech students and Viking warriors have developed a personal bond with the chickens and have grown to love taking care of them. For our chickens and to be able to identify them, we purchased leg bands that had different colors and different charms on them. Uh, just so we could, you know, if somebody claimed a chicken or wanted to name a chicken, we could identify that chicken with the charm and the color of the band. Also uh, allows my students to learn how to take care of animals, what do you have to do to take care of them, to keep them alive, and all those things are explicit skills my students have to be taught. The only thing I would add is how much we really enjoy being a part of this activity. Um, anytime we can include my students in doing any kind of partnership with any other general education peers, it means a lot to us because it provides so many opportunities for my students to learn how to interact with peers that are their age and also for peers to learn how to interact with my students. So we just love it. Make sure to check out the chicken coop if you have not yet. Now finally, I have a commentary about youth relationships. Here's my take. Relationships, they can be messy and confusing but can also bring so much joy into your life all at once. Relationships aren't just about loving your significant other, it is also about listening and sticking with each other even through the really tough times. With all relationships, it starts from the awkward phase of talking. You have most likely ran into the question from your parents, well, what exactly is the talking phase? To me, it is this period of time where you get to know the person you may like before you fully commit to a relationship with them. 
the talking phase is seen as two opposite viewpoints. To boys, the talking phase is like test driving a car. You drive it for a little while and decide whether or not it is a fit for you. In a girl's eyes, it is to get to know a person and you are supposed to be off limits to other people. My personal opinion is that the talking phase is a waste of time. If the talking phase is going to stick around, then everyone needs to decide what talking really is. Another thing that comes with a relationship is when and where is PDA acceptable. It definitely is not in school. No one wants to see you making out with your boyfriend in the hallway or cuddling up with them in the lounge area. It is unpleasant and makes everyone around you uncomfortable. PDA is something that needs to be left at home in a private area. Holding hands is hugging, now that's a different story. But I promise you, no one wants to see you kissing on your significant other, and honestly, it can wait. Thanks for watching the second episode of Sagas. We will be back with another episode in December.